welcome back to my channel. This is Genevieve, the Practical Intuitive Healer. So today's video is going to be about overcoming loneliness. Loneliness is something that has become an epidemic in our world, particularly in our Western world in the United States. It seems that the more access we have to technological connections and even though we live in these very densely populated suburban areas, we are surrounded by people, surrounded by connection through technology, and yet we are as a society lonelier and more isolated than ever. So today's video will be about some of the ways that we can help take care of ourselves and remedy this chronic loneliness that seems to be permeating our society and our lives. So first, I wanna define what loneliness is, because there's kind of a few different versions of loneliness. There's the kind of, I guess I would call it true loneliness in that you are literally isolated you do not have access to other people, you don't have relationships in your life, you don't have friendships in your life, and you are literally alone, and the loneliness that stems from that. So is there, there's that version of loneliness, but then there's also the more insidious and kind of permeating form of loneliness that is when, even if you're in a room of people, you still feel lonely. You have access to people, online, you are crowded by people in buses and subways, and yet even though you're surrounded by people, you feel chronically lonely and unreachable. So with both these types of lonelinesses, there are similar things we can do to remedy it. Whether you think that you literally don't have access to people to connect with, that there's no one in your life that you can trust, and or if you also feel like when you're around people, you just can't fully connect with them and you just feel this chronic deep loneliness and this like cut offness. Um, those two kinds of lonelinesses tend to stem from the same internal problem. So today we're gonna be looking at how to solve this kind of loneliness from an inside out approach. So especially when we're around people and we don't feel like we can connect with them, that is a really big flashing light signaling that there is something inside of us that is really unhealed, really um, maybe even traumatized that, um, that needs to be addressed. There's something that's like a literal block in your energy that is not allowing you to let other people in like your your receivers are off and maybe also your givers like you're not able to give to other people either because you are in this place of just like totally totally shut off and disconnected from people so what can you do to help yourself in these situations the first really big thing with both of these types of lonelinesses is there's probably a lot of very harsh self-judgment that is going on. Almost like um, full-on self-absorption that manifests as harsh, critical judgment of self that just turns into this internal cycle of just stewing over your life, um, nitpicking all the things that are wrong, the things that you don't like about yourself or about others. And, um, and it kind of perpetuates this just very harsh environment, harsh internal environment in which you live. And it's really difficult to connect with others when you're living in that space because you're just sort of in this like, just, just internal chaos that it's hard to interrupt it and let someone else in. So, the first thing we need to do is really get clear about checking our self-judgment and checking and trying to interrupt our thought patterns when we do get stuck in these sort of negative rumination spaces, these really just harsh 
self-judgment places. Um, because everything that you are saying about yourself and thinking about yourself is not true. Um, like the things that you're saying to yourself in terms of the judgments you're making, if anyone else said that stuff to you, it would be insane. It would be the weirdest, most abusive, weird stuff. And, and you would just know that it, that it was not true. Just as you would never say to another person, probably, the things that you're saying to yourself, um, someone else would never say that to you because it's just not true. So just sort of having a little bit of a reality check and then being like, whoa, that thing that I just said to myself, would I really ever say that to someone else? And how could that possibly be true then? If it's, if it's not true for anyone else in the world, why in the goodness would it be true for me? So having a little reality check in that sense and having a moment of really being kind to yourself it might be really helpful for you if you're in a lot of self-judgment to start writing down things that you like about yourself. And I know that that sounds really cheesy and you might be really resistant to that at first, like kind of rolling your eyes like, okay, like that's really going to help me. Um, it really does. It totally does. So if you write down even small stuff like, like I really like the shape of my wrists or I like my eyes. Even if it's like something small and kind of random because you're having trouble of thinking of things that you like about yourself, um, it'll still be really helpful to start focusing on positive attributes. Um, or you could think of um, personal characteristics about yourself that you like. Like I like that I'm really good at drawing. I'm a great singer. Um, I am a great cook. People, um, people re really respond well to me when I'm nice to them. So just just remembering characteristics about yourself, either physical or personality or whatever, that you really like about yourself and that you know are positive traits in this world and help you in terms of um, giving and receiving with others. So that's the first thing, is once you can stop being so darn self-critical and self-judgmental and try to like snap yourself out of the negative rumination cycles, um, you'll notice a difference. And at first, it's gonna take a lot of interrupting those cycles to fully get out of it. It's not just a one day practice. It's something that you're gonna have to cultivate every day in your life because your brain, if you're deep in the self-criticism, is really well trained to keep ruminating on the same thing every single day. It wants so badly to solve the problem that it thinks it's identified. So, um, so it's going to take a lot of practice. The next thing we can do if you are feeling this chronic loneliness is once you start feeling a little more accepting of yourself and you're noticing that you are less critical, that you, um, that you're either, either approaching yourself with more neutrality or you're approaching yourself with actual appreciation of yourself. Um, that's when you might be able to start mixing with other people in a way that you can start seeing them um, with a clear perception and that they can see you and you can actually start having some reciprocity in connection. Um, it's going to be really hard to just throw yourself into a group of people and start mixing with them and trying to connect with them if you're still in like a really hard dark place, with, place within yourself. If you are trying to connect with people from that dark place you're just gonna get a lot of feedback about how the darkness is true because of how difficult it'll be. You'll have thoughts like, oh yeah, I must be the worst and I deserve to be lonely and, and I must be so difficult to love because it's just so difficult to connect with others when you're in that really dark place. So it's really important to take care of your own self needs first and once you've addressed that, that dark ruminating energy in you, that's when it'll be a good idea to start seeking out other people and start making those connections outside of yourself. So how do you do this? How do you make connection, connections with other people? If you're someone that doesn't have a lot of people in your life, um, if you don't have a lot of friends or if you don't have um, a lot of family that you can call on, there are a few different ways that you can start making connections 
One is I really recommend um, exploring different spiritual institutions. I know that the idea of religion and spirituality can be a touchy subject for a lot of people, especially people that feel like they've been scorned in the past by religious communities. But I, I do not think that you can take one or even two examples of, um, of an individual church or spiritual group and, and use that to, to outcast every single spiritual outlet. Because, um, because the more you explore what is right for you in terms of your own conception of God or your higher power or whatever you want to call it, universal energy, um, once you feel like you know what your own conception of that is like, you will find the people out there who resonate with that and who you, who you can connect with on that level. And it can be super empowering and, um, and, and heartfelt and filled with connection to connect with other people who have a similar view on spirituality or religion as you do. So that's the first one is to seek out groups that um, that that might support your spiritual beliefs and finding people within that belief set who you can connect with. The second one is to connect with people in groups doing activities that you love. If you love to hike, it would be a great idea to join like a hiking group meetup or some sort of walking group and meeting people that way. If you are a mom, there are tons of outlets for finding other groups for, for moms with young kids, moms with older kids, um, and connecting with other moms who are in a similar situation with you. That seems to be a really big key is finding people who are like you that reflect the positive attributes of yourself back to you. Um, if you just if you just decide to go mix with a bunch of like Wall Street business people and you are not that at all, but that just is who you are trying to connect with. I know that's a weird example. Um, you are going to still feel lonely because you might not have a lot in common with like a Wall Street busy professional if you are a relaxed stay at home mom. So and again, that's over this. That's an extreme example, but but it, it happens. Um, so the third thing is cutting out the relationships in your life that are toxic. A lot of the loneliness that we have in our lives um, can stem from just being around certain people and certain relationships that have made us believe that we're not worthy of more. Um, so if you have found that you have been in a lot of toxic relationships recently, and, um, and a lot of them just keep validating the, the low self-esteem and the darkness that you're already feeling, it would be a good idea to start separating yourself from, from those people who don't lift you up and you notice that after you leave them, you actually feel worse about yourself. You wanna start finding the people who, when you leave their presence, you feel better about yourself and you feel light and happy and you feel like you had a good time. So if the people that you're associating with, so if the people you're associating with now don't lift you up and make you feel good, then it might be time to just take a break from those people. You don't even need to permanently cut them out of your life. You can just take some space and you don't need to make it into like a big drama like I'm breaking up with you. Um, just taking space from friends and family who aren't able to give you the kind of support and validation that you need in your life right now. This has been a pretty long video so far. It's actually longer than I thought it would be. So I am going to stop there in terms of ways that you can overcome chronic loneliness. Um, I think that those three things are gonna be a good foundation in terms of practice. There are a lot of other things that we can do moving forward to help um, to help let go of our chronic loneliness. But those three things, one, stopping being so self-critical and self-judgmental, stopping the rumination cycles. Two, once we start to feel a little bit better about ourselves and that we're in either a neutral view of ourselves or we actually like ourselves, start connecting with people like us whether that's through spiritual communities or activities that we like or other people that are like us, finding groups of people that are like us. And then three, 
having some space from the relationships that do seem to make us feel bad. So if that's friendships or if that's family members, just taking some space from the people that you notice don't make you feel good once you're done hanging out with them or talking with them. So start practicing those three things and you will start correcting some of this chronic loneliness that you have been feeling. I will try to make another video about this very topic, about some other things that we can do to explore overcoming our loneliness. All right, thank you for watching this video. I so appreciate you taking the time to learn from me and share this experience of life with me. So if you liked this video, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up and comment. Also let me know if there are any other videos that you would like to see me make on a specific topic you have in mind. I am so open to all and any ideas. So thank you and I will see you in my next video.